high, he don't make mistakes. We don't want to slice, we gonna take the cake. And we can't wait until the kingdom come. You need reservations to get in them gates. I'm a soldier. I'm soldiers. I'm on the block with some soldiers. I'm talking precept holders. We can game up like soldiers. 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 We moving wiser than cobras. Sicarius. All right, so first and foremost, we're going to say call halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahushua. That's all praise to the Heavenly Father in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Um, it's another Soldier Sunday, and today's topic, we're going to go, be going over just the the general concept of repentance, what it is, uh, how we repent nowadays, how we repent in the old days, etc., right? Um, so first, give me Matthew 4 and 17, because... Um, Yahawasha, Yahawasha, he came with the message of repentance when he uh, first dropped down, right? When he was, uh, when he had his ministry going and he was with his disciples and whatnot, right? So read that. Come on, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 4 and verse 6, verse 17. From that time, Yahawasha begun to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right, so he he was putting this this stress on repentance because the kingdom of heaven is constantly getting closer and closer, and we can see it especially now in these last days. Now the kingdom of heaven is really at hand, right? So he he during his time he was coming with this message of repentance and that we need to repent, right? And I'm gonna go into the exact meaning of repentance in a second, but I also want to show repentance in the Old Testament because normally when people think of the word repent they just think of uh so-called jesus christ new testament uh and a bunch of christian rhetoric right but i also want to show it in the new testament that uh this is not a new concept and we've been trying to uh repent since old time right give me ezekiel 14 and 6. um just showing um yeah, exactly. Uh, repentance in the so-called Old Testament. And this is the book of Ezekiel. Let me take this page. So like, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 14, and verse 6. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith Yahweh, Repent, and turn yourself from your idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. Right? So... <clears throat> so we were we were uh repenting and turning away from these idols and um abominations that we were committing or at least being told to repent from these things now go to um ezekiel chapter 18 or verse 30 right because it, it, it kind of uh makes a more broader statement because this one is uh specific and this is the book of ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 30 Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord. Repent and turn yourself from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Right. So the most I say he was going to judge us and that we should repent so that uh our iniquities would not be our ruin right because when we were repenting from our old ways uh he he uh will not turn against us because we've turned from those ways and we we started living justly right now give me tobit 13 and 6. and if anybody got a precept just uh Go ahead and bring it out. Okay, 13 and 6. Yeah, I got I got some. <clears throat> All right, Con, bring it out. Con, this is Syrac 17 and verse 25. Come to the Lord and leave your sin behind. Pray sincerely that he will help you live a better life. Return to the Most High and turn away from sin. Have an intense hatred for wickedness. That was uh Syrac 17, 25, 26 in the GNT. Kind of powerful precept the brothers just brought out. Right? Oh. Kind of, kind of, kind of, so I'm, I'm gonna bring out one to uh, um to parallel or back up um that old testament of uh repenting that it's not a, a new concept. 
this uh this uh first kings chapter eight right uh this is the book of first kings chapter eight and verse 47 yet if they shall bethink themselves they shall bethink themselves in the land whether they were carried captives and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive saying we have sinned we have done perversely we have committed wickedness Con exactly and as a matter of fact i got a precept to even further bounce off that point uh give me deuteronomy 30 and we can start at verse one it's like you put in a lot of precepts on you it's all, all praises Con, this is the book of deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse one and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee the blessing and the curse which i have set before thee and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God have driven thee. All right, so in all these various nations that we're in, we're to call back to these curses, these blessings, and these law statutes and commandments, right? Converse 2. And shall return unto Yahweh thy power, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou... Right, so Lock it. So we're returning, meaning we're turning away from something and coming back to the Most High. This is an early concept of what repentance is, right? And there's going to be a, a recompense for this repentance, right, Reed? Con, thou and thy children with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Read verse 3. Con, verse 3. That then... Yahweh, thy power will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations where the Yahweh, thy power has scattered thee. Right. So we can see an early example of what happens when we repent, when Israel repents, uh, which we can actually see throughout all, the entire period of judges. We will go off. Then we would repent from what we were doing. Um uh, well, first, we would go off, it put in slavery and subjection, then repent, come back to the Most High, and then it just repeat the process, right? But this is ultimately the recompense, what would happen uh, when and if we repent, right? Which is going to happen in these last days, and then we're going to get the kingdom of heaven, right? Um, but jump back to Tobit 13 and 6. So, like, I got a, I got, I, I got something to add to that. So, like, Con, Con, go ahead. Sirach 34 verse 30 verse 13 in the GNT. What up, Shalaka? So like Can y'all hear me? Calm. Okay, mm -hmm. calm. It says, <clears throat> so like I just lost it. Where's it at? Here we go. All right, it says, it says, those who fear Yahweh will live because they have put their trust in the one who can save them. Con, exactly. So we got to have faith that our repentance is what's going to turn this captivity, right? Because a lot of brothers, um, or a lot of uh, Israelites, rather, is scared that the Most High won't turn our captivity when we're repenting and doing what we're supposed to be doing, right? Um, come on, but get that in uh, Tobit, book, Michelle. Um, this is the book of Tobit, chapter 13 and verse 6. If ye turn to him with if, if you turn to him with your whole heart right, and with so, your whole come. So I, right. So we see this again every time it's it's talking about this concept of repentance, it's talking about turning or returning. Right, Reed. Con, with all your um with all your heart and with all your mind and deal uprightly before him, then will he turn unto you. And and will not hide his face from you, right? Slog it. When we repent, the Most High is going to turn His face upon us, have mercy and compassion upon us, and then turn the curses and uh, captivity that He's put on us. Right? Continue. Come, come. Uh, therefore, see what He will do with you, and confess um, and confess Him with your whole mouth. And praise Yahweh of might, 
and exalt the everlasting king. In the land of my captivity do I praise him and declare his might and majesty to a sinful nation. O ye sinners, turn and do just before him. Who can tell if he will accept you and have mercy on you? Right, which we, we can see um, a lot of brothers is doing this, taking these uh, these steps to repentance, right? We could kind of see uh, a broad breakdown of kind of what repentance is. Turning back to the Most High so that he can have compassion upon you and then doing his will, meaning teaching our, our people that we got to repent and uh, have the Most High turn towards them again, right? I also wanted to go... Um, into the meaning, the, the the strongs definitions of these uh, repents. So first in the Hebrew, H seventy seven and twenty five. Let me get on the board. You said eight seven. Seventy seven and twenty five. Eight seventy seven twenty five. Well, I'll read the strongs. Con, I got it. Oh, Con. In the Hebrew, it just means to return, to turn back, right? Turning back to the Most High's law, statutes, and commandments, right? And notice how it's saying to turn back or return, meaning these these uh, curses, blessings, and laws already have to be for you to turn, for you to turn back to, right? There ain't no uh, subliminal uh, grafting into it, right? That's a cut. Now give me a uh, G3340. It means to change one's mind, to change one's mind for better, heartily to amend with ab abhorrence of one's past sins, right? So basically changing, uh, like the brother um, Alizar brought out, we live in a very Greek, Greco-Roman mindset right now. So we got to turn back from this mindset that we have right now, right? This this uh, whitewashed mentality that we have and come back to our original mindset and how we operated in the, in the ancient days and how the Most High wants us to operate, right? That's one point. But it says to change one's mind for the better. Give me um, Romans 12 and verse 1 in the NLT. Bubba Kasha. I got a priesthood. Bring it out. Isaiah 1 and 16. Wash you, make you clean. Put away evil of your doings from before mine eyes and cease to do evil. Right. That's a prime example of changing your mind for the better. Right, doing all manner of uh, wicked and evil is is nothing for destruction. Like it says in Romans six, uh, the wages of sin is death. Right. Um, Can I, it is more. <clears throat> it says, learn to do well, seek judgment, re re relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith Yahweh. Though your sins be as scarlet. They shall be as they shall be as white as snow, though they be red as red like crimson. They shall be as wool. Right. If That's you, shown. Come. Go ahead. Not here. You can break it down. No, no, you got it. I'll go ahead. I, All right, come, I, come. I got I, I got two more verses for you. Go ahead. Come, right. So we can see how the Heavenly Father deals with uh, our. We see how it is on our end. But this is how the Most High sees uh, repentance. Right. He sees the amount of iniquity we commit in our life, right? His brothers in this thing been in the world 30 years, been in all type of crazy situations, right? But they come, they repent and come back and the most high wipes they slate clean, right? Like they like they're being born again, right? Right. Con. Uh, I'm gonna continue. Con. Con verse 19. <laughs> if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of Yahweh hath spoken it. Right. So if we willingly repent, 
come back to these commandments, we're gonna eat the good of the land, right? We're gonna we gonna have we're gonna be fruitful. We're gonna be back in the land of Israel, of course, and you know, doing what we do, just being prosperous, right? But if we refuse to repent. We're going to taste death, right? We're going to be devoured with the sword, which is coming to a lot of two thirds of our people in America, right? Um, all praise to the most high. Now, give me um, that in Romans 12. Up, sure. Okay, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, and verse 1 in the NLT. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you. Salaki. Okay. Verse 2. Oh, verse 2. Salaki. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12, and verse 2. In the NLT, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. By changing the way you think, right? So we gotta have faith and be be diligent so that the most I can see what he's working with and he can rewire how we operate ourselves. To be able to keep these commandments more efficiently, have greater faith, greater humility, things of this this nature, right? So this whole concept of repentance is you willingly uh, try, trying to keep these commandments, right? And then eventually the Most High is going, to, you know, uh, wipe your slate clean and and give you a uh, what's the word? Make you just make you better in general, right? Like it's like it says, a change for the better. Right now, it uh, read up a little bit. Reread, con con uh, Romans 12 and uh, 2 and then NLT. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. It says, Let God let the most high change you into a new person, right? That's that's uh, of course, as we know, it's not literal, but we know we know the saying, uh, oh, you're like a totally different person now. Right, I'm sure plenty of brothers have heard this before after coming into this truth. Right, give me a uh, Colossians right. three and nine. Okay. Right, because it's uh, it's a concept Paul spoke about a few times. Right, okay. this is the book of Colossians, chapter three and verse nine. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off. The old man with his deeds. Verse 10. Come verse 10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. All right. So after we put off the old man, our our old self in a figurative sense, after basically it's just symbolic of us putting off sin. And coming into basically like uh, it was saying in Romans 12 and uh, 2 to be just become a new person. Right. Um, which is, uh, like I said, symbolic of us coming to this truth, keeping these laws, having faith in the real uh, power, which is your howl. Right. Also, give me. Um, I want to jump to Romans 6 and 6. Right. Kind of, I got that. I got, uh, I got one for you on the same thing about uh being a new person. It's uh, Second Corinthians chapter five and verse, and verse seven. That's it. No, Salakia seventeen. Second Corinthians five and seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Hamashiach, he is a new creature, and old things pass away. Behold, all things are become new. Huh. Again, going into the concept of us becoming new people, right? You start believing in Yahweh Shah. You become a more humble person, right? You've been you've been in the world 30 years. People know you as this specific person, right? You start believing in the real Yahweh Shah, not this fake Jesus, and you just something brand new. You've never acted like this way before. You never knew anything about no commandments, right? But this is this is just how this, this is just the spirit and power of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, right? Give me uh, come on, give me that in Romans six. Come Romans uh six. We gonna start it. Verse six. 
come. This is the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Right. So when Yahweh was crucified, and when we learn about uh, Yahweh's crucifixion, and realize what it's really about, and that he's he's really uh, crucified for our sake, now we gotta crucify that old man with Yahweh, right? Which of course is just symbolic of us throwing away sin and serving the Most High, right? For example, um, temptation is it's it's a battle of who you're gonna serve. Are you gonna give into temptation? And serve sin or you're gonna uh endure through it and serve and pick choose the most high over that sin right um i i, I got a precept bro you can kind of bring it up this is john 15 and verse 4 abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except you abide in me come bring it down so basically, just like the brother saying, we gotta be we, we gotta be one with the Lord and uh, and have faith in Yahweh Shai and, and and the Most High will literally fight for us. So we have to abide in Him, and that's why uh, uh, Yahweh Shai said, uh, 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 "Greater is He." Uh, what's that verse again? That's, that's a lot. I don't I don't, don't want to butcher it. Great greater is He that is that is that is in me. I forgot the verse. Salakia. If somebody could pull it out, bring it out. But. It says, "Abide in me as I in you." So we, so the Most High through Yahweh Shai, you know, sends that Holy Spirit to us. So we, so that we can, we can have uh, uh, more of this understanding when, when, when it comes down to repentance. Otherwise, how are you going to understand what repentance means if you have no idea uh, 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 who the Lord is? What are you like? What, what's your, what's your purpose here for? Right? What? And really, our bodies is, is a temple. Right, and the Most High dwells in the temple of, of um, of us, because our temple is basically what we have to be uh, uh, keeping cleansed, keeping clean. And that's why when you read Psalms one nineteen and verse nine, it says, "Uh, can I bring that up uh, um real quick, Baba Kishaw? Uh -huh. Come on, Psalms one nineteen and verse nine says, "Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way, by taking heed thereto according to thy word." So in order for us to be to be cleansed, we got to take heed to the word of the Most High, which is what the law. And Yahweh Shai was the embodiment of that law. So we gotta have faith in Yahweh Shai and keep that work alive. So that way, that way the most high can dwell within us. Otherwise, we are nothing. Um, this uh, uh this oh, so like it. this the uh this that virtue one is first John four and four. Ye are of God, you ye are of the most high, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Right. There you go. That's, yeah, exactly. See that? So so the Most High is basically saying, listen, well, through, through Yahweh Shai is that we got to have faith in in his son and keep the works and keep the laws of the Most High because that's how you show your faith. It's through, it's through his works so the Most High can abide, can abide in you. Otherwise, you're just like a branch that has, that has no vine. Kind exactly beautiful point the brother brought out right um it's like it. give me uh acts 2 138 all right because because uh like i wanted to reiterate well not reiterate but uh the point i wanted to make with well, yahweh is coming right and in this uh ancient time right the so-called old testament um pre-christ there was the way we repented was of course going to the temple and making a sin offering, right? We would literally uh sacrifice an animal and then the most high would purge that sin from us, right? But now we don't have a temple. So what do we do? This is how the most high gave us uh, a method, a mediator of repentance, right? Come on, this is the book of uh this is the book of Acts chapter two and verse thirty eight. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahweh Shahamashiach, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. All right, so we gotta 
repent, meaning to turn back from sin, right? Put on the new man, uh, come back to the Most High, and be baptized in Yahweh for the remission of sins. Now, give me um, John 3 and 5, right? And this is also um, a dagger to the um, water baptism, the water baptism uh, for salvation doctrine. So like yeah, I got I got I got something to add to what you just said just now. Come. This is Syrac 18 and verse 30 in the GNT. Don't be controlled by your lust. Keep your passions in check. So don't don't you know what I'm saying? You see, like sin sin might come in the form of a, a beautiful woman, and the scriptures say you got it, you gotta be careful, right? Just cause just because it looks good don't mean it's good for you. So you gotta keep your lust in check, right? You gotta keep I mean, we, we all have passions, but we might we gotta make sure that our passion is not sin. So don't 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 have a sinful passion. Right. Keep you got to you got to keep things in order and really do some self-examination and, you know, check. You got to check yourself. Go ahead. I Con exactly. All right. Bring that out. It acts. I mean, Salaki, not acts. John. Uh, Salaki. It was um three and what verse? Uh, start at verse five and read down. Uh, to six. Okay. Okay. This is the book of John, chapter three and verse five. Yeah, how was I answer? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of the Most High. Verse six. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Con read verse seven, book. Con verse seven. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Right. So we can we can continually see this concept of being uh, born again, which, of course, we know is not literal. Right. It's just us putting our, our past selves away, turning from what we've done in the past. Most high giving us a clean slate and having that faith and you know, all that faith in Yahweh and keeping the law. Right, even Yahweh uh said it himself, right? This is what his baptism is. Right. Now give me um first Peter one and twenty-three. Now, this is the book of first now this is the book of first Peter chapter one and verse three. Blessed be the most high Slaki twenty-three. Oh, so like it. This is the book of First Peter, chapter one, and verse twenty-three. Being born again, not corruptible seed, not so like it, not of a corruptible seed, but of an incorruptible, by the word of the Most High, which living, which liveth and abideth forever. All right. It says, "Being born again by the word of God," and we know the laws. I mean, it's like it, the word of God is the law, right? Delivered by Moses. That's how we're born again, right? That's how we receive uh, Yahweh Shah's baptism, right? Um, Con, so give me uh, Matthew 26 and 28. Because I kind of want to also go into Yahweh Shah being that, that, not the final sacrifice, but the final sacrifice for our sins, the final uh the um that lamb right kind of kind of this the book this is the book of matthew chapter 26 and verse 28 for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins right so the reason he had to be crucified and go through with the suffering that he did right was for our sakes for so that we could have a chance of repentance right because the temple was going to be knocked down. It was going to be destroyed. So we had to have some type of way to actually repent and come back to the most high. And this is uh, the method that he used. Now give me Matthew 12 and 6. Con, this is the book of Matthew chapter 12 and verse 6. But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. Slaki, I called out the wrong preset. Give me John 1 and 29. Uh, 
This is the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 9. 29. Spilaki. This is the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 29. The next day, John seeth Yahweh Shah cometh unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of the Most High, which taketh away the sin of the world. Right. So he, he John, he already knew that Yahweh was going to be this sacrifice. Which is going to be our mediator and and, and method of us uh, repenting, right? Because when it says remission of sins, it just represents uh, uh, us uh, having a chance at repentance. Not necessarily uh, our sins be just done away and we can just sin whatever and then not count against us, right? Because we can see a plethora of accounts even after Yahushua's time of us still being punished uh, for sins that we commit. Right. Um. Now give me Matthew twelve and six. Right. To lock here for the scoffers out there that watch the video when it says he takes away the sin of the world, it's not talking about the whole entire earth. It's talking about the children of Israel. Because when you go to Isaiah forty five and seventeen, it says it calls Israel the world. When you go to Hebrews one and one, it calls it says that there's more than one world. So when when you look at the word world the, the greek word is cosmos and cosmos means a government or one particular nation of people which one nation did he die for was a nation of israel just to shut down any scoffers kind of wisdom of solomon 18 24 <clears throat> also describes israel as as a world kind of great point i was gonna bring that okay yeah, let me let's prove that real quick look hebrews, hebrews one and two hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So you, right here, you know there's multiple worlds that's plural, right? And let's go to Acts 5 and verse 30. All right. It says, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, Yahweh whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And that's just to prove that there's multiple worlds and Israel is the world that that's talking about. Con, exactly. Quick little breakdown for y'all scoffers, man. Well, I got, I got I got one more to just just to shut this whole thing down. Acts 19 and verse 20 and verse 27. So that not only this, our craft is in any is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship it. Did the whole world worship Diana? No. What world was this? The Romans and the Asian that it was Asians and, and this is dealing with the, the people that were that, that were in Asia and the and the Romans who worship Diana. We were not worshiping Diana. The whole entire earth was not worshiping the, the goddess Diana. So that's a cut because what is the word world here? Cosmos. So it was a specific government of people that was worshiping this great, so called great goddess Diana. Con exactly. Um, Con, powerful breakdown. You got yeah. some? Oh, no, that Matthew 12 and 6. Con, kind Con, of bring it up. No, this is that Matthew chapter 12 and verse 6. But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. Verse right, seven. Not so, so like Um, so Yahushua said he was greater than the temple. Why is this? Because for us to even be able to use the temple, there has to be a temple built, right? And um, we can read in John, I think I believe it was what 47 years for the temple to be built, right? So it takes a long, continuous effort for uh, a temple st structure to be set up, right? But all Yahweh had to do was come down, uh, be crucified, and now we have a chance of repentance, right? We don't have to uh, go to the temple and, and bring offerings to sacrifice, right? That's why he's saying he's greater than the temple because he's that ultimate sacrifice, right? Um, coming up on my final precept, um, we we know we harden y'all, right? Like um, we constantly always say, everybody knows a, uh, a crazy Hebrew Israelite, right? But it's, it's a reason we hard on y'all. Give me Luke 13 and 3, right? Well, it's multiple reasons. One, we want to get out of here. But two, it just shows the love that we have for our people, right? 
we're not doing it because we hate you, right? We're doing it because we want to see our people prosper, our people um, not at the bottom of society every day and waking up to some new folly, right? We just want to see our people uh, happy and, and in rulership, right? Read. Con, this is the book of Luke, chapter 13 and verse 3. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Right? So if you don't repent, uh, take off that old man and come out these, to these law statutes and commandments. That's that's the just the bare minimum. If you don't do this, then you're going to perish. That's say uh, uh, the scripture right here, right? Um, uh, can I, I, got, I got one for you, bro. It's in uh, it's in John. Bring it up. When a woman came to him, John chapter eight. All right. Um, let me see where I'm gonna start at. Uh, Uh, I'm just start at 10. Um, this is the book of John, chapter 8 and verse 10. When Yahawashah had lifted up himself and saw it, none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thy accusers? Have no none have no man, have no man condemned thee? Verse 11. She said, No man, Lord, and Yahawashah said unto her. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. All right. So he was telling her that's that's you know I mean to repent. I mean repent and sin no more. It's not just you, you know, asking for this forgiveness, but then actually being sincere about it and actually turning your back to it. Right. And not trying to turn back around like Lot's wife. Um dang, I got one more. Um I probably got two more, but this um, uh, second chronicles. I got a, a precept after you. Oh, for sure. Can, can, can I got you? Um, this second chronicles chapter seven, right? Chapter seven and verse thirteen. It's the book of Second Chronicles, chapter seven and verse. I'm gonna start it. I'm just start. Uh, I'm just go to fourteen. Second Chronicles chapter seven and verse fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and re and um and pray, and so I can and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and will hear heal their land. Right. So it it comes with sincerity. Right. I mean, not just um how the Christian church try to portray repentance. Well, you know, you just repent on Sunday, and then through the course of these next six days leading until Sunday, you live your best life. You go out Friday, Saturday, shape, move, you know, move a couple bricks, you know what I mean, move a couple packs, you know what I mean? But then you come to Sunday, you have on your best suit and tie, right? Then, you know, hey, like, you know, forgive me. Yeah, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about actually letting that person die. And become the new person, right? And Hamashiach. But you going, bro? Hello. Yeah, go ahead, bro. Yeah, yeah. Slock here. So get the book of first John one and nine. And then it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when we repent, you know, with fear and trembling, and we confess our sins, you know, we fess up to what we did. It says he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins because now we know what we did and we sincerely repent and we're not trying to go back to what we was doing. And it says it's to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So once you repent, he gonna forgive you for everything you did, just as long as you try your hardest not to go back to you. Kind of exactly, because we we know the Most High is a very merciful power, right? He's 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 remained faithful to his part of the covenant while we've been breaking our part of the covenant, right? So for for thousands, it's not even you know just every now and then, for thousands of years on end. We've been breaking this covenant, and the Most High still kept his part of the covenant up. Actually, um, go back to Isaiah 1 and 18, right? 
because the most high he he uh not uh more so on a personal level but on a broad scale he's been trying to work it work out with us right trying to get us to fulfill our part of the uh the covenant right Come, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, saith Yahweh. Though though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. All right. So the most high, he trying to he trying to reason with us. Of course, it's not no uh kind of like, oh, what can I do for you? It's, it's more of a if you don't do what I'm I'm saying. Right. If you don't do what I'm going to say, I'm going to continue to punish you. Right. But we can still kind of see he's trying to reason with us. Right. Although uh, y'all constantly breaking your part of the covenant, this contract that y'all decided to make with me. Uh, if you do what I say, come, come, uh, repent from me, repent from uh, the iniquity you're doing. I'm a wipe. I'm a wipe it clean for you. Right. And I won't hold it against you. Right. But our people still don't want to do that. They still don't want to accept the mercy of the most high, right which is why um in luke 13 3 it says everybody that doesn't repent will perish right Macon, um, yeah I, I got a preset for that come right out this is um isaiah chapter 1 and verse 28 and the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together, and they that forsake Yahweh shall be consumed. Go ahead. Yeah, man, you keep on sinning, death, death is your fate. That's basically what it's saying. If you if you, if you keep putting sin into practice and, and sin is and sin is a part of your lifestyle, then you're gonna die with with basically you're gonna die. That's what your faith is. Your your life is in jeopardy and the end of it is death. Con exactly. Matter of fact, give me uh Romans six, and I think it's verse uh twenty six, Baba Kasha, right? Because we can find it all throughout the Bible. Sin doesn't get you anywhere, but death and destruction. We can see it all throughout history, right? Con, um, it must. It gotta be another verse. No, uh, oh, the wages of sin is death. Oh, the wages of sin. Yeah, it is. And uh, it's 23. Con, this is the book of uh, Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of the most high is eternal life through Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, our Lord. All right. So, in wages, right? And wages is something you earn, it's not something that's just put on you, right? So, that sin that you're constantly working towards. Right, constantly uh, lusting after these wicked things, right? It's it's earning you nothing but death and destruction, right? But this truth is gonna guide you to that eternal life. It's gonna guide you uh, to keeping these law, statutes, commandments better, right? To serving the Most High better, right? So we gotta we gotta work to uh, get these treasures in heaven. Matter of fact, give me that. Um, I forgot where that's at. I think it's uh, Matthew ten. Which which was looking for? Uh, pile up treasures in heaven. Oh yeah, that's a uh, six. Con con Matthew six. six. And start at um, start at verse nineteen. Con con, this is the book of Matthew chapter six and verse nineteen. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doeth corrupt. Right. So so we see our people daily trying to, you know, chase a bag, uh, doing all these wicked things to get some money in Esau's world. Right. But at the end of the day, somebody can still come in your house and take that whatever you've earned. Right. Even if you got a bank account, somebody can easily tap into that system and just quickly take it out as soon as you got it. Con. Right. Read. Con. Where, where moth and rust do of corrupt. And where thieves break through and steal. Verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves doeth not break through nor steal. All right. So we gotta we gotta work 
and get these 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 treasures in heaven, right? We got to get these spiritual wages and not these uh physical wages, right? We got to work uh we got to work to getting back to the most high repenting and come back coming back to the most high so we can get these uh we can earn these spiritual riches, right? Of course, and at the end of it, right? Our retirement plan basically is the kingdom of heaven. All praise to the Most High, man. Okay. Anybody else got uh, any precepts? Uh, because what is sin, right? Let's go to First John three and four, because we know, but we still be dealing with some brothers who who's new to this. So First John chapter three and verse four: Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So when we see sin no more, that means stop transgressing the law. So one would say, you know, oh, Christ had died for our sins so we can do whatever we want to do or we don't no longer have to keep the law. Right. So we see sin is the transgression of the law. Let's go to Galatians 2 and 17. But if while we seek to be justified by Hamashiach, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. So. We can't say that Christ died on the cross so we can continue to sin. He's not saying that he died for our sins and we no longer have to keep the law. That's like saying Christ died so we can continue to be sinners. And that's not the case. The, the whole point is we have to come back to the laws. And the reason why we're not, you know, um, we're not under the judgments of breaking the law so we're not getting killed for for committing adultery and these things we still have opportunity to repent because all of us here you know we deserve to be put to death for breaking sabbaths committing adultery and all these things that we've done in our past so repenting is coming back to the law and you know that's really how, how you follow him come on i got precept box bring it up this is Sirach 15 and verse 20 he hath commanded no man to do wickedly Neither had he had given any man license to sin. All right. Khan, exactly, right? Most of he ain't just willing, he ain't just uh telling us, oh yeah, you can do this. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna let it slide, right? Most high most high, of course, we know he lets us slide because of his mercy, but at the end of the day, he'll still judge you for it, right? He might give you that little bit of mercy at that time. But when you when on that judgment day, you're gonna have to hear about it, right? Um, yeah, I got I got two precepts for you. Con, two con. Hold on, this a is oh, so like, get ahead. Right. Con also, also back off the point of the brother brought out in Galatians, right? I just want to put it into like a more uh physical, not physical, but a, a, a more understandable situation because a lot of our people they they hear brothers talking about the Bible and they just think it's um some mystical thing right um it's like somebody dying for you because of the mistake you made and then you go out and commit that same mistake what was what was the purpose of me dying for if you're just gonna go back and do the same thing you was just doing i died in vain right so that's what y'all are doing with your Shah's death when y'all be like oh i can sin because your Shah's died for my sins that's not what that means right bring it up Con, this is Romans 3, verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? Yahweh forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Come, bring it out. Con, so it's saying, so because of faith, do we just stop? Do we just continue doing whatever we want to do? Can we, do we have free will to, to, to break the law? No, you damn, God says, hell no. God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Meaning what? You keep that law. Because even Paul says, I, I, don't not, I don't know sin if it have it not been for the law. So how do you know you're committing sin if you don't, if you don't even keep the law? You don't even know the law. How do, how do you not go to jail in America? By keeping what America tells you to do and not breaking the American laws. So how do you not get the death penalty when it comes to the most high? Don't break his laws. Right. Even though we're not under that, that we're, we're not under the law. We're under grace right now. So, yeah, I know. We, of course, we're not under the law right now. No one's forcing us to keep the laws right now. But does that mean you you break the law willfully? No, because when you willfully break the law, 
the death penalty is on is is literally knocking on your door. Like when it says in Genesis four, when it, uh, with Cain, he said, "If you continue in sin, sin, sin lieth right at your door. It's gonna knock at your door, and you and, and you're you're in for a rude awakening because sin is the wages of sin is death." And I got that other one for you to that that other precept. This is um, I don't know if you read it yet, Art. Uh, Ma Matthew seven. You bring it out. All right, Matthew 7, verse 21, in the NLT, it says, Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name, as if you Christians didn't even know the name, cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. And they do it in Jesus' name. That's why you, That's why the Lord don't know you. Right. Because then it say verse 23. But I will reply. I never knew you. How are you going to call on another name? You don't know who I am. Right. I never knew you. And then it says, get away from me. You who break God's laws and the name Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. Then those names are in the Old Testament. When you change the word Joshua into Hebrew, it's Yahweh Shai. When you put when you look at the word Jehovah or Lord in Hebrew, it's Yahweh. So if you're not calling on the right names. And you're not keeping the laws and commandments of God because the names are very important and the laws are, are very, very important. Because the laws stand forever and the name Yahweh is forever while Yahweh shies forever. So these laws, statutes, and commandments are forever. And if you don't keep them, the Lord says, I never knew you. You break God's laws. And into hellfire will you go. Kind of exactly. I kind of uh, slack it. You can go after me, Sharap. Um, I want to bring out a point because the brother was talking about America's laws. I'll, there's... Um, I want to say about four thousand laws in America, right? Our forty-four thousand, exactly forty-four thousand. Um, our people will strive, right? They, I, I guarantee, they keep at least half of those. So that's twenty thousand laws, twenty-two thousand laws, right? But it's it's only six hundred thirteen uh, laws in the Torah, right? Our people, they act like six hundred thirteen is just some huge number right but they'll they'll continuously stop at that stop sign not run any red lights that's how basic the most size commandments are give me uh matthew 10 and uh 26 no no not 26 28 right because y'all y'all will fear the police all day you get pulled over your heart drop to your stomach right you keep god's laws oh i go to church i'll be i'll be straight right right read this is the book of Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather, fear him which is able to destroy both spirit and body in hell. Right? So our people, they fear man on the daily, right? They fear, oh, oh I'm, I might get pulled over if I got this in my car. Something like that, right? But you eating that pork. Oh uh, no, it's not all that serious, right? Uh, the most high, the most high uh, knows my heart. The most high knows my intentions, right? But but you ain't fearing the most high because most high could easily in your reincarnation, in your regeneration, just make you uh, uh, uh what they call a special child, right? Uh, all type of disabilities, man. That's what it means to destroy your soul and body in hell, right? Um. Give me Sirach 23 and 19, right? Because they, they just act like the most high not seeing anything that they're doing. You might be on mute, you know Jerome, are you there? Salaki, that's my fault. I thought I thought I took it off mute. Salaki, this is the book of Sirach, chapter twenty-three and verse nineteen. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men, and knoweth and knoweth not the eyes of the Lord are ten times brighter than the sun. Behold, beholding all the ways of men, and cons and and concerning the most a uh, uh, secret place secret parts so, uh, right so y'all only y'all only scared when it when it has something to do with man seeing you right 
Oh, I don't want to see. I don't want the police to catch this in my car. Oh, I don't want this. Right? Not knowing most high eyes, he sees everything ten thousand times brighter than the sun. Right? That's why he says our skins are like our, our sins are like scarlet and uh, crimson. Right? Because it's easily visible. Right? He sees what we're doing on a daily basis. Right? So, Sharak, you can go ahead. Mm. Because, like we were saying, we're not under the law. We're not under the judgments of the law. But does that mean that we don't keep it? Right? Acts 17 and verse 30. says and the times slack and the times of this ignorance god winked at so he was winking at you know all the times we broke the laws before when we wasn't keeping the sabbaths when we was doing things that was disobedient to the most high but now command of all men everywhere to repent and this now is like right now right because these are the these are the last days we're not far far from the end of these prophecies so this is the time you know that that we need to save our families and come back to the Lord because us going out there to the highways and byways, you know, we deal with people that lose their children. I mean, we deal with a lot of people who who's been burying their kids and a lot of grandparents that have been burying their kids, you know, at a very young age. So the only way that you want to be able to put this hedge of protection of the most high is by repenting, you know, and he went at the times that we, you know, broke it. So it's not too late for y'all to repent, but that window of opportunity is closing on y'all. Kind of exactly like you said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, right? You run me, you had a point. Yeah, kind of, kind of. Yeah, if I if I can um just uh, start a couple of precepts on because the brothers and y'all y'all making uh beautiful points because especially when y'all went into repenting is what is turning back to the lord right it's turning back to the lord keeping his words right the same words that was told to moses and was told to the children of israel right that's what we're turning back to we're turning back to the lord we're turning back to his words what he commanded us to do and now people got in their mind like well hold up now well everybody got a bible now so if the words of the lord is in the bible now all nations can hear the words of the lord now all nations is up for it now it may have been initially Moses was giving it to the children of Israel, but now, right, everybody got access to it. All right, well, check this out. Let me um, let me go to Jeremiah real quick. Matter of fact, I'm gonna start up. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18. I'm gonna um, let me see, chapter 18, verse. Uh, I'm gonna start at seven. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, and verse seven. At what instance I shall speak concerning the nation, right? Any nation, right? And concerning a kingdom like America, right? To pluck up and to pull down, right? So the Lord said he can lift a nation up, put it in power, or he can pull it down and to, and to destroy it. Verse 8, if that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent. Of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And we know this ain't the case, obviously, because we can see that America is known as Babylon, right, in the scriptures, right? And Babylon got a great judgment coming her way, right, for all the whoredom that she done throughout this whole world, right? So we know that that's not the case, but now let's go into individual nations because people will say, oh, well, that's just Babylon. But what about an East Indian person? That's living in Jamaica, right? Because some of them slid down there. We'll check this out. Let's go to Second Ezra. Second Ezra, chapter three, right? Chapter three. Um, we're gonna go to these last three verses. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna read the last three. Um, this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter three, and verse thirty-four. Um, wait, thou, therefore. Our wickedness now in a balance, right? So weigh wickedness in a balance. And there's also that dwell in the world, right? So weigh Israel wickedness in a balance, then weigh all these other nations, right? That, that's in this world, weigh that in the balance. 
and so shall the name nowhere be found but in Israel, right? Verse 35, or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in thy sight? Or what people have so kept thy commandments, right? Talk, talking about keeping the commandments, right? Turn to the Lord, right? Verse 36, thou shalt find that Israel by name have kept thy precepts. What's the precepts? It's law upon law, right? But not the heathen, right? So it don't matter where they are, right? Babylon, right? South Africa, right? In Jerusalem, you see that? Um, in Russia, it don't matter, right? If you're a heathen, by default, right? You were just created to be a servant, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you want to wear tassels. It don't matter, right? You want to wear a meat tree. It don't matter, right? That that's your fate. It's already cut that way. I mean, because the Lord, he just said he can judge you as a nation, right? So he, he says, I lift nations up and I bring them down, right? So he said, no nation has kept how I many these precepts. And that's why I said, weigh our wickedness in the balance with theirs. Kind of exactly. Um, anybody, got any, anybody got any points? I got a precept. Come bring it out. Uh, Zephaniah chapter two. I'm gonna read this in the NLT. Zephaniah chapter two and verse one. It says, "Gather together, yes, gather together, you shameless nation, and y'all, you Israelites, you so-called blacks and Hispanics, y'all shameless because." Y'all not ashamed of being crabs in a bucket. Y'all not ashamed of having other nations that you're better than having their foot on your neck. Like y'all really comfortable with that foot on your neck. Gather before judgment begins, before your time to repent is blown away like shaft. And this time is coming so fast. If you're really paying attention to the times that we in, we are in the last prophecies. And these prophecies are going to all come simultaneously. Everything is going to happen back to back on these last prophecies that's that's yet that has been fulfilled. It says, act now before the fierce fury of the Lord falls and the terrible day of the Lord's anger begins. And it's already begun on you black and Hispanics. Y'all dying so fast in 2021. There was 100, 560 homicides. And and we we're higher than that at the time that we in right now. It says, seek the Lord, all who are humble and follow his commands. This is how we repent. It says, seek to do what is right and to live humbly, changing your mind, right? Perhaps even yet the Lord will protect you. You know, we never tried this as a people. We never really tried following the commandments. None of our people really understood this to be able to teach this. And now that the understanding is in the world and we teaching the people, you know, it's a time that we get us a try, right? And maybe the Lord will protect you protect you from his anger on that day of destruction you know and this is why we do this and this is how we show that we love y'all that's all i got i can everybody on mute no uh Quadamiala. Yeah, I think I think uh bro, he made uh he may got a little busy, but all praise to the most high God. This definitely was a powerful lesson. It definitely was needed uh for Israel though. All, all right. praises uh Yeah, all praise the most high. Con Con you you don't uh, got no precepts, no point. Yeah, 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 yeah. John 17 and 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And what's and what's the word of what's the word of truth? Psalm 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So that's that's what we need to be doing, is be teaching them. We we do this to, to bring y'all back to repentance, right? Which means and, and the word repentance means to return back to what are we what are we returning back to? The laws of God. Because that's what sanctifies us, that's what cleanses us, and it's the truth. And it and and the words that that 
that are that are written are spirit. John 6 and 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So that's the truth. Kind of exactly. Kind of, um, anybody else got any more precepts? I right, can. Um, so all in all, just to sum up what we were saying, um, we need to repent. Us as a nation, we need to repent, come back to the Most High, and these laws, such as commandments, start uh, uh, having faith in Yahweh Shah, so that we can not only better ourselves but also our communities, and then get up out of here, right? Because I'm, I'm sick of waking waking up in this captivity. Um, so kind of with that, I'm going to call Halal, Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shah, and Mawaf Laba Ball. Mawaf Laba Ball. Mawaf Laba Ball. Mawaf Laba Ball. man. Uh, what you know about waking up from a whole lifetime of living savage? Spirit on you till you go to the highways and byways and been up to the marriage. Turn back or otherwise perish. You ain't always got a bust a glass. But this here ain't for everybody. If you ain't with it, then get up the block. Crack your fucking head, leave a husky knot. We ain't all about love, nigga. You looking at ex gang members, ex convicts, and ex drug dealers. Everything is a balance with us. When the teacher speaking, it's a silence with us. Cause we real soldiers for your Howard child. Other false gods don't want no challenge with us. Islam and Christianity is the biggest drug that's known to Jake. Right. Take heed before you OD and then bug out to a hopeless fate. The most high, he don't make mistakes. Uh -huh. We don't want to slice, we gonna take the cake. Yeah. And we can't wait until the kingdom comes. You need reservations to get in them gates. I'm a soldier. Soldiers, I'm on a block with some soldiers. I'm talking precept holders. We can game up like soldiers. Soldiers, soldiers. We moving wiser than cobras. Sicarius, La Cosa Nostra. Or a 